very different for you. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's that's what I usually. It's, it's been a while, but I usually I like doing a lot of the layering. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. And um, subtract, you know, take uh, sandpaper and destroy it, and then build it back up. And just kind of keep adding layers until you until it's done. Yeah. I'm trying to do larger scales now. So tell tell us about them. Um, well, these three were inspired by my trip to the Grand Canyon, the Bryce Canyon. So I love taking photographs. Um, then I went out of my box and tried the acrylics. Yeah. And then this was again. I always take photographs, but um, I wanted to do something different. So I created a, a collage, and um, that's my silhouette. It's beautiful. And so it's sort of like the things that inspire me are nature and flowers. And so there love you go. it. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got all all clouds this year in lots of different forms. How come? Tell me about it. Um, I love this. It's so interesting. Oh, okay, thank you. I love clouds. Um, I've been obsessed with clouds since I was a little girl. I used to want to touch them. Um, and I, I even joined the Cloud Appreciation Society a few years really? ago. At least feel like that. You can reach out and touch them. Thank you. Well, I did this one first, this, but this one took the longest. Um, and it has transformed a lot. You know, I kept building it up and building it up. And then, and then I was... It, it, it all kind of came from a dream I had, actually, about clouds. That one I took in North Carolina. Yeah, the cloud was just and then, and then one, this one, very different from that style. Which too. one? This one or that yeah, one? Yeah, this one. That one's like a paper transfer. I took a couple of stormy photographs and I used this new material and um, uh, pasted it on it. And this crazy storm cloud just nearby. And then I wanted to have a sculpture with it. So. Um, yeah, I look forward to your sculptures each year. And uh, Clint did help me with the base. Yeah. So. Looks great. Thank you. Great showing. Thank you. And then, and then, yes, it is. And then the people themselves are good. They had a whole. So, this piece is about bees. It's called Keeper because bees are such an important part of our ecosystem. Bees are also an important part of my life. When I was little, I used to catch them and let them go. But also my family crest, we were, my family uh, goes back, we were beekeepers. Okay. So in Germany, back in Germany, beekeepers. Wow. So bees are a thing, but also they're super important. And it's important to pay, you know, pay attention to that stuff. So I did a soft cut block print and then I altered it. The paper in the background is from a re repurposed store in North Carolina, as are the paper for the flowers, which are clothing patterns. Um, clothing patterns are a big part of things I do because um, trying to fit everyone into the same box all the time, doing the same thing, you know, restricts our freedom for being like individuals. So I, I do a lot of that. So the paper for the flowers, which are important to the bees, are there. I also faded out um, the imagery and faded out the colors because if we lose these in our ecosystem, it's going to be a problem for humanity. And I did groups of three of everything in there. Um, so that three is a spiritual number. It's a fire number. It's it's very important. I use that a lot in my artwork. So I have three bees and three uh, flowers around the bee itself, trying to just kind of frame it and do a little bit of block printing graphics versus a little bit more natural stuff. Beautiful. Love it. It's very, very new stuff style where you're color, <laughs> add, adding some <laughs> different layering yeah yeah I will very never cool i love it something that technical ever again. yeah that's wild I will, I will linoleum cut it from now on so yeah is, it's hard to do for that much detail so, beautiful piece though thank you yeah absolutely so, we're inspired by my, trip, my recent trip to utah 
having been to Utah. It's so the, the red rock and everything. Beautiful. Thank you. Getting a lot of texture and some details in in your work that I didn't even see last year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've been working more. That one I worked a lot of times. Uh, we worked. That one has a lot of layers that I don't see. It was going to be a completely different painting. I love these. Excellent. Fantastic. All right, Jackie. All right. Tell me about the work. Hi. Uh, it's a <laughs> much. <laughs> Hi! Got a lot it's, of work. It's a mod podge of all the things that I did this year for fun. Because that's what I was just doing. You've been working a lot this year. I know, I've been having fun. That's the point, you know. That's why you make art, right? It is. Have fun. So a lot of it's from like when thinking about when we came back from Europe, like sardines and like canned fish, and then kind of like when we were getting in towards Inktober and just try my stuff. How's with Inktober it. going? Oh my gosh, these kids love it. So much fun. <laughs> but yeah, but having fun with art. Good evening. Um, um, I just wanted to say um, how happy we are to have the fourth annual faculty show here with us again. And I also wanted to say how the work has just taken off. I mean, there's some really beautiful stuff here tonight. Not that there wasn't before, let me just qualify that. But um, I know how difficult it is, because I've done it, um, to teach and produce. You know, teaching is so, it's all consuming, it's all you do. And um, over the years, last four years, it's obvious that you've taken the time to look ahead to the show and really produce just some really fabulous stuff. And um, I just want to say how happy we are to have you and your work here. Um, I also want to uh, introduce, not introduce because you guys know who he is, <laughs> but just to pass the mic off to uh, Michael because I do believe that this show was his baby, I think. <laughs> I might have had something to do with it. I'm not sure. Michael. Woo! Absolutely. Marvelous job. This year is no exception. All right. Thanks again. Thank you. Have Thank you, seat. Allison. <laughs> All right. Tell us about your art. Okay. Where do you want to start? Well, You've got a lot this I mean, year. So much. I have more. <laughs> I've been doing a lot. Um, Beautiful stuff. I have a family inspiration, so my my uncle does ceramics, and he used to teach uh, elementary school and retired early to sell his work, and he's been very successful, and I started going to visit him, and he taught me a lot of different things that he does, so, like, every summer I'll go, and then last summer, you know, I learned a lot, and this summer I learned even more, and, you know, so it's like... Putting these textures on, I mean, it makes it look really more complicated than it is. But it just, you know, makes them really rich and, and interesting yeah. looking. And then the different figures, these are my cats. So, you know, of course, drawing inspiration from family and, yeah. you know, we all love our pets. Um, I love Halloween. Uh, I love Dios de los Muertos. So, um, you know, some inspiration there. And my, my younger brother... He said, make something that hangs on the wall, you know, so I had to figure out how to do that. But that's kind of how I came up with these candle holder, wall pocket things. And then, and then this, you have more year, too. He said, make, make me a clock. So I had to figure out how to make him a clock. And the, the amount of detail you're pouring into these though. <laughs> how long has it I taken you it. to do these pieces? Oh, I love it so much. Have you been working nonstop? Uh, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Staying an artist. I love it. Yeah. And piggy banks I started making for my nieces and my nephews. So that's, they're, they're hard. They do. They really do. I love it. It's fun. These are great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You work 
Very, very different. Very different than last year, the work. You think so? I do. Like, all the detail that's being poured in with the black. It's interesting. It's, no, but it's layering over top of that, the thick, rich colors. So, so where's this coming from? Where's the style evolving? It's, it is. It's evolving. Plus, it's the, um, the tools I've been using for so this is actually like a pre-K um, project that I did, uh, where I took the medium and was just trying to experiment and see what I could do. So it's Elmer's glue mixed with black acrylic. Um, and this is three layers of tracing paper deep. And I started to fall in love with uh, texture, like you said, and yeah. the layering. And when you, when you superpose like that on top of some acrylic painting, the the emptiness and then the richness, they went together, but they also look pretty beautiful apart. And I feel like that explained a lot of myself with it. It does, perfectly. And then um, some of these others are two other three are more the traditional scene side of myself, where it's trying to find the screen the piece, and then my version of the morning. Um, I might start busy schedules, I pulled over and had my kids take a look at the sunrise, and that was that. And then this was a vacation where I would make sure we all pulled over and took that deep breath that we need. Beautiful. So it's definitely, I feel like, an evolution compared to the years past. It does. It does. Getting your really, you know, very unique style going with all of it. Thank you. Coming together. I was really proud of this new set and the feelings that I got when I was making that. A lot more action. And it... It's interesting because if you look back at the works from last year that were more like this one in the middle, they've evolved into something new. And it'll be interesting to see where you go even next year and where I, that transcends. This process made me so excited. It reminded me when I did screen printing in college. And uh, it's so much fun to see how it evolves and how it evolves and how it evolves and how moderately instant like that's maybe you know 10 or 12 hours but it, you could see it more evolve quickly as opposed to me taking a break and having to do things in pieces that's not how my brain works so it was a how nice do, challenge how do your kids do with this when they see you doing yours as well uh, they get excited uh they're like are you really gonna let us do that and i was like why else would i do it if i didn't think you could do it and then they want me to make another film <laughs> Great series of work. So this is my 3D work. Um, I have some 2D and 3D. Um, and I started my pottery business on the side, which has kind of taken off. That's becoming very official. All my October classes are completely full except for four slots. That's awesome. Really You're uh, entrepreneuring. Yeah, yeah. Getting it done. Apply for my LLC insurance. It's exciting. Doing a bunch of craft fairs coming up. Um, so I'm just trying to make a lot of my own work, doing a lot of blaze experimentations. Um, are your kids feeding off that, that you're an artist and you're doing like, all these things? I've given out cards at school because they're like, my mom wants to come take classes with you. That's awesome. Um, I've had students come too and like practice some of my AP kids that are just like, Building a community. Look at that. Yeah, and yeah. It's, everyone's kind of connected. Like anyone that comes to my classes, I know them from somewhere else. I've had people come from Easton, and I haven't even really advertised out there, which has been really cool. Um, I've noticed my throwing skills have really improved since I've started teaching people. And now you'll notice your kids' throwing skills will start to improve oh, too. So much better. Like right? this year, and I have so many kids at school that are really, really excited about being on the field yeah. because I've learned. Because you're like, excited about being on the field. Yeah, 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 and they see that the work that I'm producing coming out of the kiln, all the different glaze combinations, so they're really, really excited about it. So yes. hopefully in a couple of years we'll have some like amazing potters. We will. Coming out of the All right, and you also have paintings and all kinds of things. They're all trees this year, um, but because I'm doing so much 3D at school, um, I'm really trying to incorporate the 3D art into my 2D work as well. Yeah, lots of texture. So this is hot glue um, and acrylic paint. Both of these are. And I just 
just like how easy it is to do, how much texture it adds, um, a little bit of shine with the gold leaf and the silver. Um, so just kind of fun, bright pops of color, nature inspired. Um, I'm going to have a big one over here because I got a canvas on sale. All right, let's go check this out. We've got a good turnout tonight. Yeah. So I bought this canvas and I was... Wow, look at the texture on this. Um, I love the background texture that came out. I actually piped acrylic paint onto the leaves. Went through a ton of acrylic paint. But yeah, just playing with different textures. And bringing some of my paint into my jewelry. You are. Awesome stuff. Great job, Mikkel. Congratulations on your, on your new business, too. Tell me about these this year. So these are all cast stone sculptures. Um, and the How do reason, you do cast stone sculptures? So I make the original mold out of clay, and then I make a silicone mold from that, and then it is a resin with a stone dust. Um, then I paint them with oil paint, um, and there's usually a couple layering processes with that. And the whole reason why I started making them is because I am a gardener. And I love to make things for outdoor spaces, so these are actually weather resistant and could be outdoors year round. Um, and many of the ones that I have are like been there for like 10 years out in my garden. Uh, so that's a big motivator for me was to make something that was durable because so much in our you know in our spaces are disposable or they don't last, they don't stay. Um, so I, I wanted to color make something. Combos, too. Thank you. The, that's the Very thematic paints. based with the blues and the greens and such detail. Well, thank you. Beautiful detail. Yeah, I um, I really enjoy working with textures and uh, and just kind of like building those reliefs. So it's probably no surprise that I do a lot of relief sculpture with my mm -hmm. students. No, they and work that's with cardboard. Do they do I, they see these? They, I did have a lot of kids come last year and saw oh, cool. and saw them and when um when I do my introduction and just like talk about how I am also an artist, um, I do share them as well. Oh, good. Now so. you'll be able to share this video with them too. Oh my god. <laughs> you're, you're not even here. Right. I don't even have a mic. <laughs> Let's take a picture. We're gonna have a show. Like there's the fire there's like that fire underneath you to like keep you going. So. Well, look at the turnout. We had such a great turnout. It's fantastic. All coming out to see our teachers as artists. It's exciting. How long have you been working on this? Oh gosh. Um, probably close to 10 years. I started off with ceramics and then. Uh, How are you? Thanks for coming out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is what every artist longs to see. The red dot. That means soul. Beautiful. Congratulations. Thanks. First sale at the Queen Anne's County Arts Center? I love it. Yay, thank you. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs>